Hello everyone. In today's video, we'll see that if you have already started your career as a ETL developer and uh, you are entering the second half, right, of the first year of your ETL developer career, then what all is expected from you and what all you can expect, right? And I'll also share some of my personal recommendations based on uh, my experience uh, when I started as a ETL developer over a decade back, right? So in the last video, we saw that, okay, uh, first few months as a ETL developer, what all you can expect, right? You have to obviously start learning the technology and there will be some ad hoc tasks uh, coming your way. So you should be open to work on that. And also you should try to understand the project, the client, right? What kind of work the team is doing. So in today's video, we'll see that I'll share four main points as according to me, which uh, you should uh, proactively look for and work on it, right? So the very first point obviously is the learn the technology. So you like few months back, you joined a project and now you have identified what are the main technologies used in the project with the help of your supervisor, as I suggested in my previous video. So now you know that, okay, this technology one, technology two are the main technologies which I have to learn and so that I can contribute to the project. You should continue doing that, right? So, so I, like in my case, it was Teradata, right? So I started learning Teradata and uh, I uh, like spent some more time on upskilling on in it, right? And my recommendation to you is, Obviously this step will continue and it's not like it's in in few months you will learn something in and out and you will become master of it. You have to spend probably years mastering that technology, right? And so this step will continue for some time, right? Till you have good grip on the technology. However, my recommendation to you is that along with your main technology, right? There are some other skills which also require your time and you must uh, like I'm reiterating, you must invest some time on those skills as well. So the two topmost skills, which I feel right, are the, like the side line, you can say the, the helping skills are Microsoft Excel and any text editor which support regex, right? Regular expressions. So like I have used Microsoft Excel and Notepad++ a lot. And uh, the reason being is since you're working with data, right, many times your data is not accurate. And if your data is not accurate, your SQL may throw error. It could be uh, like you are not even able to run your SQL on top of your data, right? So how you will debug it, right? So at that time, you may get some sample data, look into it. So for that, you may want to use Microsoft Excel a lot, right? And there are some common patterns which you have identified and you just want to replace it. So you may want to use a text editor where you can run some regular expressions and just change it. Uh, if you're on Windows environment, okay, you can use text editor. If you're comfortable with CLI, obviously you can use the Linux, uh, SED or AWK commands also, right? So my recommendation to you is along with your main technology, spend some time learning Microsoft Excel. Like in Microsoft Excel, text to column is a very good function, which you will use a lot. I'm pretty sure because I have used it a lot in past, right? We lookups I have used a lot to identify the missing values. Similarly in text editor, the regex uh, I have used a lot, especially if I have to add something at start or remove something from the last, right? So all those dollar and uh, exponent uh, carrot symbol all. So learn the regex, right? How to use the regex in notepad. You don't have to rush for it gradually as and when you will encounter some problems, you will realize some patterns and you will uh, find out the solution for it. But yeah, spend some time on these things as well, right? All right, so moving to the next point, right? So uh, as per me, right, you should also invest some time in understanding the concepts. So obviously you are working on SQL, you are loading some tables, you are updating some data, you are extracting some data, you are importing data, right? So this is the pure technical thing where you are running queries, right? I want you to learn the concepts at the same time, the ETL concepts. And good thing is if say tomorrow, your enterprise move from one RDBMS solution to another, like in today's world, the cloud data warehouses like Snowflake and Amazon Redshift are very popular, right? So the thing is your technology may change, right? SQL 
will be somewhat similar only because all the standard RDBMS solution follow ANSI SQL. However, the ETL concepts will remain absolutely the same, right? So uh, my recommendation to you is start learning the concepts also the ETL concepts. And when you are writing any SQL query, right? Try to map it like for any given SQL query, try to add tags to that SQL query. And those tags should represent the ETL concepts. Like say you just now ran an insert statement. Now what you can think is, okay, I have just now loaded some records into a table. Is this a dimension table or it's a fact table, right? Uh, is it a staging layer or it's a EDW layer? Am I loading these tables as part of some data marts, right? So how this will help you is that whatever the theoretical thing you are reading, right? The ETL concepts you are reading, you are actually mapping it to a technical SQL query. And with this, you will learn a lot, right? So tomorrow, whenever you will see an update operation, you can quickly realize that, okay, this is, this looks like SCD one to me, right? So this dimension is of SCD one type, right? So like, I don't want to bombard you with a lot of information right now, but this is a very basic thing and you should start at a very basic level also that, okay, today I say, I learn that there is a staging layer where all the tables are mostly truncate and load. And in this SQL, which I just now wrote, I'm also doing a truncate and load. So is it my staging layer, right? So just try to tag your SQL queries with these ETL concepts and it will really help you for sure, right? Moving to the next point, contribute to the project, obviously. So if you have joined a team, right? And you are into the like six months, seven months into that team. By now you should already be allocated to a project, right? And so you should start contributing to the project, right? Try to understand what exactly the project is. When is the release date for this project? It is very important, right? Because you should know what is the deadline? What is the timeline you have to achieve? And initially you will start contributing in a very small portions. It's not like that you will be given a complete ETL pipeline end to end to build, test, deploy, and go through the unit, unit testing, everything. Uh, you will be contributing in very small portions. Like maybe your senior developer is creating some code and he's asking you to run it. Right. And maybe he has some task. He has some checklist unit test cases and he will share those unit test cases and code with you and he will ask you to run and capture the unit test cases results maybe that so executing code building code definitely you will start writing some sql queries a basic insert statements right update statement delete statement start writing those code as well copying code now many people will think that copying code is a bad thing but trust me it's not an exam where you are cheating, right? You are working in a project. You have to deliver a project and time is a factor. So if there is any reusable code, which you can copy and use it as part of your code, nothing works like that. It saves a lot of time and that code is already tested by somebody else. It's working fine and you can reuse it. Please go ahead and do that. Don't feel shy, right? So just to give you my personal experience, right? My personal example. So when I started a project, right, and uh, I was given a very small module where uh, data was coming into the staging table, it was a truncate and load. And from that staging table, I was loading a dimension table. And uh, the logic was very pretty straightforward that uh, if there is any new record coming into the staging layer, just load it into the dimension table. If the record already exists, just ignore it, right? Now, as part of this, right, there was a requirement that whenever I'm loading a new dimension attribute into my dimension table, I have to increment the dimension ID by one. So basically the requirement was to generate a sequence number or the surrogate key. And at that time I was working on Teradata V2 R5 or V2 R6 version and the identity column was not that popular. I, I doubt that it was even available at that time, right? So I was not sure that with SQL, I don't know how to generate numbers, right? I was starting my career. I was a fresher. So I don't know how to generate one, two, three, four, five, six. Like if already one, two, three to 10 exist, how to generate 11, 12, 13. 
I was not sure, right? So what I did is I just reached out to one of my senior engineer in the team and I told him this thing that uh, I have a project where I have to write a SQL to generate numbers and I don't know. So if you have any code which I can reuse, that will really help, right? And the senior engineer was kind enough to share one of the code which he recently built and that code was doing exactly the same thing. It was getting the max ID of the target table and then adding it to the row number. That's it, right? So it was hardly two lines of code. And now uh, once I saw his code, I realized that how how beautiful it, it was written, right? And I learned it for rest of my life, right? That, okay, if I have to generate a sequence number and I don't have any identity columns like that, auto increment columns, then I can use this method, right? So copy code and as per my experience right in any data warehouse environment you will find if you are writing something which is the logic which is coming for the first time consider yourself lucky that you are learning something new else in most of the cases right uh, you will be writing a logic which is already written in one way or the another in the same project for that data warehouse so yeah try to reach out to you people sitting on your left and right that i have this requirement and how can i implement it i'm not discouraging you to do google and identify it yourself feel free to do that as well however uh, like to respect the timelines right this is also one very uh, like accepted possibility that you reach out to your seniors asking for if there is any code available which you can reuse and reuse it with proud okay so, and the last is obviously testing code. So making sure no syntax errors occurs, right? And when you are reviewing any code, right? Uh, your seniors has written, try to understand that what exactly was the requirement and how he has coded it, right? And that uh, next time when you are getting a similar project, you will know that if this logic is coming, I have to technically convert it into SQL like this, right? Okay. So this brings me to the last point of this uh, video, appraisal cycle, right? So since uh, you are joined as a fresher and now you are reaching the first year, right? And you've been contributing to the project, try to understand the appraisal cycle, right? And appraisal cycle means your performance appraisal cycle where every organization will have, I think, uh, at least a yearly appraisal cycle. In some companies it is even two times a year but yeah at least one time a year there has to be an appraisal cycle so you have to understand what exactly is the appraisal cycle like whether it is in april or it is in december which month people generally get hike or get promoted right so you have to understand that for this you can reach out to your hr you can reach out to your supervisor and if you are eligible right in most of the companies like accenture infosys tcs if you're joining as a fresher, right, uh, you should be eligible for promotion the very next year because you are at like level one and then you can promote to the level two in the next year. So if you are eligible as per your company policy, right, then try to understand that what are the parameters for you, right? Like eligibility criteria is one thing, but to be uh, promoted to the next level, right, what all tasks you should do to make sure that you are moving to the next level and have a discussion with your manager as soon as possible right not like you're joining the project and very first few months you started talking like this but yeah once you have spent some time in the project and build the rapport talk to your manager that uh, what is the appraisal cycle if i'm eligible or not and if you are eligible then what all points you have to cover like you are already billable. You should be billable. That could be one criteria. Uh, you should have got some good feedback from your seniors or maybe client. So like that, some criteria, right? And see where you are already fulfilling it. And if you're missing anywhere, focus on that area, right? Because next year, if your peers are getting promoted, you want to be promoted too, right? So consider appraisal cycle also as one of the key points uh, like when you are reaching your first year, right? As a ETL developer. Yep. All right. Uh, as part of this video, I wanted to cover these four points only guys with you and hope you are, you can relate to whatever I am saying. You can relate to it. And, uh, if you do, then please share your experience as comments in the video. Right. And I am planning to uh, upload few more videos on the same line. 
so if you have any suggestions or recommendations for me feel free to leave a comment all right thank you guys thank you